How's it going? So I posted a video a long time ago uh, showing uh, an LCD being driven by an FPGA. I didn't go into any detail or anything like that, um, and I had a few requests for the actual code. So I figured, like with my other videos, I'd, I'd at least give you a description, uh, be a service to uh, you, me, uh, engineering in general. Um, so I'll make this video uh, so that you can kind of understand how the code works, uh, even be able to edit the code and move it around um, to suit your needs or, or maybe even to make it run better. Um, in fact, if I remember right, there are a few things that, that you could do to make this code run better. This was actually a project that I did in school. Um, and now looking back on it, I think, uh, I think there are definitely a few ways to make it go to run better. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to be one of those things that needs to suit your needs one way or the other. Um, I will put a link to the, the previous video, although it's just, it's just me getting it running and very happy that I got it running. But I'll put, I'll put that there so that you can see it actually running. Um, and maybe one of these days I can come back around and, and set that up and get it running and make a different video of it actually running and how it goes through code by code. But I'll try to also post the, uh, the code in GitHub. I'll make a link down below so you can get to that. And I'll also post all the parts down there so that if you want to go buy the parts and do this, this project, um, which would be great now that we're all apparently taking a break, um, or at least a lot of people are. I'm not. We've got a lot of stuff going on at work, so uh, I'm going to continue to to do what I can from there until until I can't anymore, and then I'm going to work from home, and that'll just be the way it is. And that's good. I mean, these times you've got to have you got to have work, right? I mean, what are we going to do when uh, when this is all over? You're going to need money. You're going to need to keep moving forward. So, actually, super glad that I've got a, a job right now and that everything's moving forward. So, anyways. With that, let's move on. So the objectives of this, I, I kind of picked up an old presentation that I had. It looks suitable for this uh, this video, so I figured I'd just use that. And uh, it's actually it's laid out pretty well for this sort of for this sort of presentation, right? Um, so the objectives of this are to write to the LCD, as I mentioned. Um, but to get there, we're gonna we're gonna take a few steps, and this will actually kind of show you my process in learning how to code. Uh, for an FPGA. In this case, it was the Mojo, uh, I think, V3 FPGA. Um, and this was just me learning how to get in and code the thing. Um, so this ought to be a really good starter for people to learn how to code on an FPGA. Though I wouldn't call it the best project to start with, um, you know, programming uh, LCD. But it gets you into, you know, memory and, and how all that works and, uh, you know, how, how LCDs work. And you learn a lot of different things. There's some filtering that went on. Uh, you might check out one of my other videos that has some filtering techniques in it. Um, but yeah, so it's all to, to write to an LCD um, from an FPGA, and in this case, it was a Mojo V3. Uh, so to do that, I'm, I'm first going to start showing how to make an onboard LED light up on the FPGA. That's the simple stuff, right? You want to learn how to turn something on. You want to learn how to turn something off. That's the outputs. Then you want to get some inputs. You want to do you know a, a push button control. So the next thing is make an external push button, control that LED, right? So now I've got feedback, I'm, I'm pushing a button, and a light is lighting up. Um, of course, it's just visual feedback, but it's good feedback. Uh, then we're gonna make a counter, because you have to have a counter to, uh, to do everything in FPGAs. Not everything, but most things in FPGAs, I've learned that I, I just use counters for all sorts of stuff. Uh, counters next to counters to do different things. Uh, you can even, man, with some, with some creative Boolean logic, you can make all sorts of stuff happen with counters and clocks. Uh, then we're going to go through and make the LED blink separate 8 bit codes in sequence. So there's a there's a set of, F, of LEDs on the actual FPGA that I used for this, but most of these starter FPGA boards have uh, you know a bank of LEDs or something that you can control just so you can get some feedback and know what you're doing in your code. And that should work fine with those. You'll just have to change the, the net around. Um, the netlist that I have is not going to be the same netlist that you have. Uh, it also depends on your software. I reference some software in here that I use. It was great at the time. It's not the same anymore. In fact, I'm using Vivado uh, for a lot of my stuff. But the code, the code that I have there, I can pull that directly in and just change a few of the, the things, you know, like on the netlist. Um, and if you make your code modular enough, you should just be able to pop that in and then uh, take your inputs and outputs and use them from there. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna make the LED the LEDs blink in eight separate or in separate eight bit codes in sequence. 
and this will be used later to drive the uh, the memory on the LCD to plug in different codes at a time. Uh, so that's kind of the next step once we figure out how to make something blink. Uh, then we figure out how to turn stuff on and off with a switch. Uh, then we use a counter to make the LEDs blink. So now we're we're timing that blinking. Uh, now that's that can become our output as an 8-bit code. Instead of blinking an LED, we're blinking or turning on and off the bits of the, the memory. So from there, we can go through and make a code sequence, make the code sequence independent and non-repeating. So the first one that I make, I'm just gonna, I just want to see that I can make it work. So I've just got this repeating code that uh, that makes things, that makes the the LEDs blinks, turns on the out, turns on the outputs, right? And then from there, I want to make an independent non-repeating blink or an independent non-repeating output, because ultimately we're going to control an LCD with uh, variable things, right? This in this case, I think I had a, a temperature sensor and I was controlling some fans and some Peltier. Uh, cooling pumps and stuff like that. Um, and I wanted to be able to display on the LCD what was going on with those things. And that's going to come from the memory. So that's kind of an independent process. And each each time it went through, it'd have to put out a different code. So that's kind of what I'm getting at with the independent thing. Um, then we'll create a separate code sequencing event to write data to the LCD's memory. So you can't just throw um, the actual character codes at this you have to there's certain sequences event of events that have to take place i'm not sure how deep i get into that in this presentation um, but it's all covered in the data sheet which i will try to go over um, during this video uh, this may be separated into a, a, into a multi-sequence video i'm not sure yet we'll see how long it starts to kick along um, if it does if it does take just too long and, and i don't think that you're you or me if i think that i won't sit down and watch the whole video um, all in one shot, then I'll probably split it up into a couple of videos, uh, maybe even tag some different stuff so people can find uh, some of the concepts that we talk about here that are relatable to other things in the videos. Um, so yeah, so we'll create a separate code sequencing event to write the data to the LCD's memory. Uh, and from there, we should be able to drive, uh, turn on and off the LCD and uh, change all the bits on the thing and, and uh, make cool patterns. And um, really, I'm just going to be driving... Um, I think uh, ASCII or AS, ASC, yeah, ASCII characters, um, but you'll you'll learn from the data sheet that you can turn on, you know, even single bits within this LCD uh, display. So the materials that I used for this project, uh, me personally, and these can change, right? And I'll kind of go through these one by one. I used a computer with Xilinx ISE when I did this. Um, I still have Xilinx on my computer. It's it's under one of my win my Linux distros. And I, I run that every once in a while just to play with things. Um, but um, I think nowadays everybody's using Vivado. Um, Vivado, man, it's HDL is just HDL, right? You can get HDL to work in Vivado. It's just, I think, personally a little bit more tricky, um, mainly because I'm from that environment. If you're from the Vivado environment, I'm sure if you went into ISC and tried to do this, you would think, man, that's ridiculous, right? Um, but you can use this code with any um, IDE um, or programmer. But um, what I used for this was Xilinx ISE. Um, then I used some various jumper wires, a, a temporary push button, uh, 1K ohm resistor, 1K, 1, or 120K ohm potentiometer. Uh, that potentiometer is turned light on or up and down on the, the screen or on the LCD. Uh, breadboard for this one, uh, I think it ultimately wound up being put into a perf board. Um, I don't think I made an actual PCB for this, but that's not too too difficult to do. Um, then uh, the 16 by 2 LCD um, display, which is important for this this presentation, it's going to match with what I'm doing. Um, driving other screens will follow the same lines, but you're going to have to look um, at all the different specifications for your LCD as you're going through to make it. Um, how many how many times you have to throw the code out to it? Um, when does it turn around? Stuff like that. Are you writing to certain memory positions? How many memory positions are there? Um, all that sort of thing. And then of course you're going to need an FPGA. Um, I chose an FPGA for this project mainly because I was doing digital systems um, in class, and FPGAs made digital systems make sense to me. Also, I'm I'm kind of I'm I'm a software guy in electrical engineering, but I love hardware. 
Um, so that's just the best of both worlds for me. I don't like the abstract layers as much. I can do, I can deal with them. I can work with them. Uh, you know, C plus plus Python up, up, up. Um, but the more abstraction between me and my hardware uh, seems to be a little more time consuming for me. And I don't, I don't like to take up my time working on these things. I like to play with them, but I'd like to get things working as quick as possible. So for me, uh, FPGA was the way to go. Obviously, there's code, there's libraries out there for doing this with all sorts of microcontrollers and all sorts of other things. Um, but this was really a route for me to learn how to start working with the FPGA. So going back and looking at this, the video winds up being uh, 59 minutes, I think. And that's without even getting into the data sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and split this up into uh, multiple videos. Um, that way we can, we can pinpoint exactly where we want to be. Um, you don't have to watch the full, <laughs> what will wind up being an hour and 20 minute uh, video all in one shot. Um, and if you're wanting to look through and find, say, a certain thing and you don't necessarily want to watch all the videos, you can go right to that step. Uh, so for now, this video is uh, going to be over and we'll see you in the next video. Love well.